Hey everyone, just wanted to give you a quick heads up. The second Global Product Owner Summit is coming soon. You can get all the details at bit.ly forward slash product owner 2024. That's bit.ly forward slash product owner 2024. And it's all lowercase, all one word. Oh, and uh, stick with us until the end of the episode to know the dates and the tracks that we have for you in this year's summit. But for now, let's dive into today's episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Wednesday, the Leading Change episode this week with Joe Scherler. Hey, Joe, welcome back. Hey, back. So Wednesday is, of course, Change Leadership Day. That's, that's how I like to call it, at least. And uh, we're going to talk about a change process that you were involved with. And uh, specifically, walk us through that process, you know, from beginning to end. What were the steps? What was happening at each point in that change process? And as you go, highlight for us the tools, the tips, the tricks, the techniques you learned back then that you still apply today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was working with a team, starting with with a team that had sort of this famous or infamous Spotify model built into the organization. Um, And I saw that it was not really helpful for them because there were not that many people uh, in, in the teams. There were three teams and they were relatively small. Um, yet they had chapter leads for, for, uh, three different, four different things. And, um, that created a reporting structure within the team because those chapter leads also had to, to be on the teams. And there was a, there was a basically technical supervision and and a line management supervision within the team and then also reporting from the chapter leads to their manager. Um, that resulted in, in, in quite a bit of um, delays in decision making and, um, and basically getting the product off the ground. What I had in mind was getting rid of that and Of course, when you have people who have a position with a title, there are things tied to it. And um, you cannot just take a title away and basically change their reason for being there without without having the buy-in. And it was not about taking away the, the, the title. It was about changing how we collaborate so that we can be more productive as teams. Um, that I, I tackled by having the conversation with their top manager there and basically talking about through all those steps that could lead to something where he delegates basically almost all the decision making on, on a technical level um, to the team. Um, and would feel comfortable with it. I mentioned that uh, yesterday uh, with the management 3.0 delegation poker. That's a, that's a useful tool to have conversations about um, basically enabling the team to, to, to make more decisions. Um, and uh, I then also looked with him at the actual current um, accountabilities of a, of a chapter lead and we dissected those roles to see what are they and what could they be in the future. And uh, then I, I coached him through those conversations with his team as we, as we went along and defined how those chapter leads could show up um, and yes, still be people who are leaders, but leaders who lead without authority and are recognized for what they bring to the table, not because they have the title. So you were trying to help move the chapter leader to be kind of a a collaboration catalyst, is that so? Collaboration catalyst, um, I 
one aspect of the of the new role was also for them to be mentors to the rest of the team. Um, that was only possible because we we basically had the conversation also about let's not talk about story points. Let's talk about the results of the team. Before you do that, you cannot you cannot make those other shifts. So as we, as we talk about the value, it's then more it's more natural to talk about okay how how does value come about it comes about through teamwork teamwork can only be more productive when we learn from each other so it's really building out those steps and we created a coaching backlog for for the entire team so what i hear you say is that when we shift the conversation from how many tasks did we finish or how many story points did we deliver to what was the impact, right? What's the value of the work that we did? Then we are able to move the contribution, the, the discussion to what the team did as a whole, rather than how many story points did Anna do versus Bob. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and people would then also, people in the team would then also start having the conversations about how do we get stuff done? not stuff but how do we actually how do we actually create this feature how do we improve the product versus i'm done with my stories yeah and so, so kind of creating that mentality that the team also wants to focus on delivering value and, and is asking themselves how do we get this value delivered rather than you know can we do all of these tasks in this sprint for example yeah. One of the, I think one of the crucial points there is to, to be at the side of the manager and, and show them and teach them how a good interaction with a scrum team can look like so that they find their own way to interact with them. That's not pushing for outputs but rather inquiring and curiously inquiring about, hey, what have you achieved as a team? Absolutely. Kind of modeling the leader behavior. Yeah. Very good. That was a great story. Thank you for sharing that, Joe. Thank you for having me. Hi there, Agile friends. Thank you for sticking around and listening to the details of the Product Owner Summit, this year's global summit dedicated to a critical Scrum role, the Product Owner role, of course. We'll have some amazing keynotes and four tracks filled with first-hand stories and experiences for product owners to learn more about that critical Scrum role. The summit will take place between April 23rd and 25th, so book your calendars. There will be loads of sessions for you to attend. One of the keynotes will be Dave West, the product owner and CEO at Scrum.org, one of the largest Scrum organizations in the world. If you want to know more, check out the details at bit.ly forward slash product owner 2024. That's all one word, all lowercase, bit.ly forward slash product owner 2024. We will also have four tracks. The four tracks will cover cross-functional product ownership. That's track one, as uh, Pixar's Ratatouille said, not every idea can be a great idea, but a great idea can come from anywhere. And this quote emphasizes the importance of a product owner being open to all ideas, regardless of the source, and also challenges us to focus on getting good ideas from everywhere and involving the whole team in the product owner role and responsibilities. The second track is designing products for growth, where we explore how to craft products ready for scalable growth, merging practical strategies with innovation. The idea here is to learn to design products for growth, whether it is sales or customer acquisition. The third track is Know Your Users, user-centric approaches for agile development. In this track, we learn to master user-centric techniques in agile development, to deeply understand customer needs and transform insights into meaningful UX designs that focus on engagement and satisfaction. 
This is a track ideal for innovation-focused agile teams. And the fourth track, one of the most exciting tracks, in my opinion, is product development with AI, ideas for product owners. Not only do we discuss about using AI in the products, but also AI for product owners to learn to make a bigger impact with the help of the AI tools that we already have. The Product Owner Summit will also present to you great opportunities to network with your peers. So get your ticket and join our Slack. You can get the ticket and join the Slack at bit.ly forward slash product owner 2024. As always, we have free tickets and also the paid tickets that help to support this podcast. So check them out at bit.ly forward slash product owner 2024. That's all lowercase, all one word, product owner 2024. I'll see you in the summit floor.